Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's move on to page 60, the final page in grade five, discovering music theory chapter on chords and inversions. So on page six, do we move to the final challenge where we get to have a look at a couple of pieces of music and we delve into the music and bring together everything that we've learned about chords so far. So there's no new material here at all, but there's quite a lot of extra busyness. As you can see, it's a much more busy piece of music with lots of extra sort of in-between passing notes that might easily throw us off the scent. However, everything is exactly as we've learned before and we're going to look at these more closely now. And so we need to name the chords and then that in turn will help us to name the cadence points. And as I mentioned previously, here we have a piece of J.S. Bach and he wrote absolutely hundreds of small little hymn tunes like this one that follow this format of these busy four-part harmonies with cadence points at several places showing kind of mini endings and then full endings and lots and lots of inside interweaving of melody notes and harmony notes. So the first job is always to discover which key we're in, then we can write out which chords we're looking for, and then it's just a matter of picking out the information to describe what we see. And so we're in the key of G major, we have a key signature of F sharps, there are no other clues to tell us we're in a minor key. And actually we can see we finish on a G chord at the end. So that's another nice little confirmation there. So we're in G major, so let's map out our chords. So we are looking at chords one, two, four, and five. If we're in G major, chord one is built on G. Then stepping up, we have A, we missed chord three out. We're not looking at that. And then we have C and D. Building our triad, G, B, D, based on the first, third, fifth, A, C, E. C, E, G, D, F, A. And then we can also prepare to describe whether it's in root position, first inversion, second inversion. So we have a chord here. Now notice this note G is a two beat note, so that is still carrying on for this chord here. These are our harmony notes. That's not a harmony, that's just a passing note, just a in between stepping through from harmony note to harmony note, passing through by step. So we have an E, a C, an E and a G, which is a chord four. And the lowest note is E, which is our first inversion. And so it's a four B. And then here, the tenor line and the bass line have converged to share this note. So it's this one note is representing two voice parts. We would say we call these voices, regardless of what instrument it was played upon. So we've got soprano, alto, tenor, bass. So here we have a G, a D and a B. So that's a chord one. And the G is in the bass, we're in root position, so it's a chord 1A. Let's carry on here. So this is the chord we're looking at now. So we have an F. Of course, that's an F sharp, but your key signature will deal with that. An A and D, D. So we have D, F, A, that's a chord 5. 
and then here we have a B D G B. That's a chord one. Oh, I've forgotten. Do apologise. We need to describe the bass note. So the chord five, the F is in the bass, so it's a five B, getting carried away. And then here this is a one with a B in the bass, so that's a one B, kind of first inversion. Now we haven't finished labelling the chords yet because we still need to describe these cadence points, which we can't do until we've decided which chords they are. So here we have a G, D, G, B, that's a chord one. We don't really need to know which position it's in to know what cadence this is, but let's do that just for some extra practice. It won't harm to do a little bit extra work. And so as the G is in the bass, the root note, we're in root position, so that's one A. And then here we have D, D, F, A, F sharp, of course, your key signature deals with that. That's a chord five. We don't need to say much else, but we can do. We can say that the D is the bass note, we're in the root position again, so that's a 5A. Let's carry on with chords and then we'll discuss the cadences afterwards. Now here we have D, D, we have an F sharp and then that A is a minim and it's still carrying on here. So that's part of this chord, it's still playing, it's still sounding. So we have D, D, F sharp, A, which is a chord five. And the D is the root note, so we're in root position. And then we have G, B, D, G, that's a chord one. And again, it's in root position with the G, the tonic in the bass, one A. And so our cadence one is chords one to five. If it's anything to five, it's gonna leave us hanging. It doesn't sound finished at all. And that's our imperfect cadence. And then here we have five to one, which is our kind of ta-da, finished, solid close. And so that's our perfect cadence. Five to one is perfect. And this is where I find music theory gets really, really interesting because we've really delved between the layers of this music and we've really begun to dig out what's going on in the notes and the harmonies. And so you get another opportunity at this next little example here. So I recommend that you just have a go of this on your own. Doesn't matter if it goes wrong, just have a go. And there are a few tricky little kind of red herrings in this um, that may throw you off course. So have a go, see how you go on, and then we'll check through that together now. So I'm hoping you've had a go. The first clue is what key are we in? That's what we need to decide first of all. So we have a key signature of nothing. So it could be C major, it could be A minor. So we look for some accidentals to tell us what key it is. Now if it's an A minor, we would have a raised seventh of G sharps. We don't have that. We have this C sharp that then is cancelled again. That isn't telling us that we're in D minor. That's not the raised seventh for D minor because there are no B flats. We are indeed in C major and we can see that we've got a C chord here that nicely confirms that. This is just a passing chromaticism, just a passing little bit of crunchy harmony. It's not a key change. It's just an, a sort of a bit of a red herring of a sharp that is gone again. It's not telling us we're in a new key. So that is a little bit sneaky there, isn't it? So we're in C major, so chords one, two, four, and five. C, D, F, G. Build our triad, C, E, G, D, F, A, F, A, C, G, B, D. And then we're ready to go. A, B, C. So perhaps if you didn't get that to begin with because of this sneaky accidental here, perhaps you can press pause now and carry on. Now you know what to do to crack on. 
So we've got to describe all of these chords and we've got to describe the cadence. So we may as well just go ahead and describe the chords. So we have E, G, C, G, that's a chord one. And because the E is in the bass, it's a first inversion, it's a 1B. And then we have D, F, A, D, that's a chord two. And because the D is in the bass, it's in root position, so we could say 2A. You can just say 2, but you may as well put A to be absolutely clear about that. Now here we have B, G, D, G. That's a G, B, D chord. All the parts of chord 5 are there, but because the B is at the bass, we need to say that it's the first inversion, it's the 5B. And then here we get a E, G, C, C. The soprano has come really low and joined the alto line. So that one note is representing two voice parts, as it were. And so that's a chord one, a C, E, G chord. However, E is the bottom note, so it's a first inversion, it's a 1B. But we still need to explain these chords here to be able to properly describe our cadence. We have G, D, G, B, that's a chord five. We don't really need to explain what position the chord is in, but we may as well just be thorough. It's a root position because G is the base, it's a five A. And then we have a C, E, G, C, that's a chord one. C is the base, it's in root position one A. And five to one, is our perfect cadence which brings the piece of music to a complete finish kind of a ta-ta ending that's the perfect cadence to this little piece of music it's the perfect cadence to the end of the exercise and it's the perfect cadence to completely finish this chapter so well done we've completed all of the work on chords and inversions and cadences we will get some more practice of that later. However, I suggest we leave it. Let's give it time to sort of settle and digest and also give it time to perhaps forget it a little bit and then we can come back to the exam paper, the practice exam paper, and we'll get a little bit of revision to blow the cobwebs off and refresh our memory. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.